Hello! I'm Brittany. And I'm Brad. And we are Audio Shelf. Before we begin, make sure you hit that red button down below to subscribe to our channel. Yes, and also hit the little bell so you can stay up to date when all of our new episodes go live. So today, we're going to be reviewing one of our favorite books of 2019, well at least mine. Yeah, we have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot. <laughs> and that book is... Before the Broken Star. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok! I think it's upside down. No. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. I'm kind of sick, so I'm a little crazy. <laughs> Don't get me sick. No. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. By Emily R. King. <laughs> Emily R. King, thank you. Yes, thank you so, so, so much for writing this book and also providing us with it. Yes, she sent a message to us saying, reach out to her publicist and her publicist sent us this book. So thank you everyone at Skyscape. Mm, that's such a cool name for I love a it. publishing company. I love it. Love that. So it's also important to note before we actually begin into the content of the book that we also listen to the audiobook of this book. That's a lot of books. That's a lot of books. Narrated by Lauren Ezzo. Hey, Lauren. And we uh, received that from Brilliance Audio? Yes, from Brilliance Audio. Mm -hmm. They sent us a little downloadable code. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kendall. Yes. We love Brilliance Audio so, so, so much. So thank you again for sending that our way. So as we jump into the book, we just want to explain a little bit more about what this book is about. You can obviously see that it's a beautiful clockwork cover, which we adored and we made sure to take a lot of pictures of. Yes. Right from the beginning. It really drew us in. Mm -hmm. we, we love clocks. Mm -hmm. It's very old timey. So it looks like an old time clock. So we're just obsessed with this cover. Yes. And it feels oh, really nice. It does feel really nice. It feels really like nice. silk. Yes, it is. It's very like soft touch cover. So the actual book though is about Everly Donovan. She is a girl who was the sole survivor of an assassination attack on her family. And she had her heart replaced with clockwork. Yes. Her uncle helped in that process and actually ended up raising her after her family was killed. She's exacting revenge, or at least trying to exact revenge, on the man that ordered the assassination against her family named Markham, and she will go to any length to get him dead. Mm hmm Especially like an island. Yes. She goes to an island. She goes to an island. She actually gets arrested and sent to the island and then married off and weird teenage wedding to Jameson. Mm -hmm. oh, Jameson. I love Jameson. But there she ends up going on an adventure with Markham and his crew mm -hmm. in order to find this hidden world. She becomes best friends with hookers. Basically. That's the tagline of the book. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a action-packed, uh, very thrilling adventure that really has a lot of heart, not just because she has a clockwork heart, but it has a lot of heart in the book yes. as well that we really loved and connected with. Mm -hmm. And it was very quick and it, I got, I feel like it got to the point very yeah. quick. Yeah. I started the audio book yesterday and I finished it yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it was about a nine hour and 40 minute audio book, yep. which we will be talking about on our podcast. We'll be diving more into Lauren's narration and everything on there. But for today, we're just talking about the content of the book on this episode. But if you like audiobooks, feel free to pick that up because it's a very quick listen and you get all of the adventure that was is was still within it. Yes. So this book is coming out on June 1st. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming the audiobook will be coming out then as well. Yes, yeah. That's what it had on Amazon, it's June 1st, 2019. Mm -hmm. And then the second book in the series. There's a second book? Yes, there's a second book coming out August 20th, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> what? <sighs> yes, August 20th. Never has a chronicle chronicled so fast. It's chronicling out of control. <laughs> <laughs> that was really hard to say. That was so hard to say. <laughs> oh my God. So what do we expect from this book? Oh. I expected adventure. Yeah. I expected historical fiction for some reason. Well, okay, so, oh, we forgot to mention Emily R. King, if you don't know her, if you don't know that name, is the author of The Hundredth Queen. Yes. 
So I feel like historical fiction with anything with queens comes into play. Yes, queen. So I feel like Emily has this history of history mm -hmm. within her books. Yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. And it was definitely a time period piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really was. I kept wanting Everly to just like whip out her cell phone yeah. <laughs> and like text her uncle and be like, hey, I'm kind of arrested and married now. Yeah, help me. But she couldn't because nope. that's not the world that they live in. <laughs> Even though they live in some like pseudo our world where fantasy stuff is not necessarily the norm. Mm -hmm. So it was a different kind of world, even though it felt like our world at times. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I knew that I was going to have a, there's a love interest involved. Yes. I love how it was done though. Mm -hmm. Jameson is perfection. He really is. He, you don't know if he's a bad guy. You don't know if he's a good guy, but you know, he's going to be there no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, you can rely on him, which is really, really nice. Not just because he's a guardsman, but because he's perfect. Yes, that's right, I was just thinking about him. <laughs> yeah. So what I expected from the book, because I haven't read The 100th Queen yet, mm -hmm. Brad has. Um, so I went into this just looking at the cover, thinking that it was going to be about like a, a girl who has a weakness about her, and it's about her strength building over time until eventually she gets to the end and she is this strong character who fights the foe that she's been after all book long and, mm. and wins and defeats him. And then since it's a series would continue on to the ramifications of that revenge plot. Um, but I was really surprised to see that Everly is strong right from the beginning. She doesn't let her physical ailment get in the way of what her mission is. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think more female characters need to be written like. Yes. Um, I mean, we're seeing a lot of it now where it's just like these kick-ass female characters are like coming in and there's nothing stopping them from the very beginning of achieving their goal. And I think 2019 is really That's the, the year. year. That yeah. is the year. Mm -hmm. And it's also, magical to me because I wasn't expecting to have such a strong villain yeah, in ugh. this book. Ugh. Villains are very hard to write and you either write them well to the point of us hating them or you kind of go half -sea, where we hate them but yet we have to love them because they've done something, you know, they've done something, something miserable because they're in pain. No. Uh. This book has it all. It has a villain who who sticks with the plan and doesn't have us feel sorry for him. There's in no any sympathy. Way. There's no sympathy. No sympathy. No sympathy at all. And that is a good villain. No. Markham is a douche. He is a jerk. And I hate him so, so much. I seriously texted Brad while I was listening to the book and was like, just when you think that you have seen all of the villains that literature can provide and you have have witnessed the worst of the worst. Emily R. King comes in and slaps us in the face with Markham. Markham? He is despicable. Ooh, I agree. Mm. And I just love all of the other characters throughout the book. There's Harlow. You don't know if she's bad or good. I don't like her at all. There's a there's a little bit of like likeness to her. She's like a sidekick villain kind yes. of person. She's so desperate. Yeah. She's, she's a desperate. desperate little streetwalker. Yeah. And then there's Laverick and Claire Claret? 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 Um, I love those. We call them the facts. The fox and the cat. The facts. The facts! <laughs> facts are facts. <laughs> the fox and the cat. The fox and the cat. And then there's my girl, Vavina. I love me a good madam. You would. You, you definitely would. Like mm -hmm. I could see you being Vivina in the in the in the movie adaptation of this. Voluptuous Vivina. Yeah. Yeah. I mean she just had like so since I listened to the audiobook, Brad also listened to the audiobook, but he was reading along with at the same time. Um I got to or we got to experience the characters being built in a different way. They mm -hmm. had voices for them because of Lauren Ezzo. And Lauren is such a great narrator. If you mm. haven't listened to a book narrated by Lauren, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but it's wrong. 
So you're missing out. You're way, you're way missing out. So the way that she built like Vivina in particular was just this like, oh, she had a voice on like any of the other characters. Yeah. And it was just strong and it was powerful mm. and you knew that she was just unstoppable. Every time she walked in the room, you knew it was Vivina. All eyes on her. Yes. All ears, actually. All ears, yeah. <laughs> she was a great character. My favorite character was Blue. Oh my god, I love Blue! She was she came in pretty much in the last like three chapters. <laughs> she really did. She was like a nothing character like not a nothing character because all characters matter. They they all have like a part in the story. But Blue was just she didn't even talk. She reminded me of Tinkerbell in a way. Yes. And, oh, 100%. And even though I don't like Tinkerbell, I because Tinkerbell. I think Tinkerbell is a little brat. Oh, you think of like, I think of Tink as like Julia Roberts yes. from Hook. And yes. I'm just like, ooh, you and your face. Yes, you fake little You fake little person. fly. Thumbelina is better. Thumbelina is better. But no, Blue reminded me of her in, in a way of she has a mission, she knows what's right, and she's going to help the person that she's connected to, which in this case was Jameson. Yes. Yeah. So I really liked her character completely. It was well thought out, even though it was very short and literally small. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just great. It was just a great character. I think she's going to be big in the second book. I hope so. Which, because she got her name, like yes. an actual name. Her, I don't, I don't want to say her name. No, we're, we're not going to ruin it. We're not no. going to ruin it. No. But, but she does have a, a name other than Blue that gets spoken. Yes. Which reminds me of the second book. I loved... The best thing I think about this book is that it was... It wasn't short to any mean. It was no. still nine hours. Yeah. It was about 313 pages of in the arc. Mm -hmm. But it was so wonderfully developed, concrete. The story was clear and concise. And I really, I really appreciate that from a YA author because, like we did in with Grim Lovelies in our podcast episode, that book was way too long, and there were times in that book where it needed to stop and move on to the next book, and it didn't do that. Yeah. But with this book, it was clear of where the beginning, middle, and end was, and it's going to set us up for a sequel. Yeah. Which I love. I'm so excited for the sequel. Mm -hmm. And also piggybacking off of that, it was just so cool how whenever there was a climactic part, because there's a lot of fighting and stuff throughout. So much action. You knew there was a certain sense that Emily was able to put into her writing where you knew this wasn't the final boss. Like yes. you knew this wasn't the big bad. This was just like a minor little pop of, of action to mm -hmm. like kind of... Um, make you keep turning the pages yeah and she did that wonderfully and so i really really liked how there was still a lot of action but it never made me go oh my god this is the 45th fight like come on is this not the end like the grim lovelies did oh sorry i was mimicking you but i was right i mean but you were right <laughs> <laughs> we're both right we're both right but no, seriously, you're you're so right. I love how she ended each chapter. Yeah. Because each chapter made me want to turn the page and start the new one. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why it helped us get through this book so quick. I mean, I don't think that there's another book that we've gotten through any quicker. Like two days, one yeah. day. I, I mean, mean into the jungle, I, I finished pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one, it was just so so quick. I'm so excited. Oh. So thank you so much yeah. to Emily R. King, to Brittany Russell at Skyscape, to everyone involved in the production of this oh book. Oh my god. And it, oh, if it hasn't if it's not clear, we're totally recommending you get this. Yes, we're like, shelving this. We're shelving it! Totally. Like June first, if you don't have this in your cart on Amazon or at your doorstep because you pre-ordered it, yes. you need to get this book. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And I feel I could just see the movie for this. It has to be a movie. It has to be a movie. It has to be. Sorry, we're very animated. Brad's very animated today. <laughs> he is turned up. Oh. My goodness, I need a drink. <laughs> so that about does it on our review of Before the Broken Star by Emily R. King. Again, thank you so much to Skyscape for sending it our way. Uh, we absolutely loved it, and we can't wait to dive into the second one and the third one. Oh, so many. 
uh, it's gonna be so, so good. If you liked our review, please hit that like button and also the subscribe button to let us know that you're here and watching with us. And share this video with everyone because we need it. <laughs> We're desperate. And if you wanna join the conversation, please feel free to follow us on our social medias. We have our Twitter at Audio Shelf Me. We have our Facebook at Audio Shelf. And we also have an Instagram at Audio Shelf underscore podcast where we share pictures and we talk with people. Brad shares a lot of polls on Twitter that do phenomenally well with giving us insight on what our community is doing and liking. And we just really like to interact with everybody. So please go and follow those different channels and chat with us. And if you want to follow Emily, our king, please look for her on social media as well as going to her website at emilyrking.com. Yes. So until next time, bye. bye.